Hey, this is Terry from Fiberscope.net. Today we're going to be talking about our Anaconda Pan and Tilt camera unit. Um, when you receive your set and take it out of the box, it's probably going to look something like this. There should also be a neck strap that will connect onto here. Um, we just don't have it here because it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, basically, you're going to have the camera head that will be in a separate box. The remote control that works with the unit. There's a USB stick. So this is what you can transfer images and video onto if you want to send them to a computer or laptop. And a power adapter to charge the battery which is inside. There's also a 128 gigabyte hard drive built into the case. So you have a hard drive that you can save most of your files onto. Uh, if you've got a couple spare parts, there's a um, audio set. So there's a couple headphones um, if you want to listen to any of the um, audio that you save on here. There's a built-in microphone. And then you have just a couple of extra cases, or extra cables, and then um, also your skids. Um, when you get one of the cables, you're just going to want to hook it up. Um, basically, on the monitor, there's a couple different things that you can do. So there's video input, video output, if you want it to go to a bigger screen, if you want to use the monitor to record something from a different device. Um, for the pan and tilt camera, you're going to only use the Cam 2 port, which is a 5-pin port. Um, if you wanted to use one of the smaller 1-inch camera heads that we sell, like the Viper units or the Viper ADVs, that's when you would use the Cam 1. Um, on the video setting or video option plug, there's three options. So Cam 1 would be for the Vipers, Cam 2 is for the pan and tilt, and then the video is if you're using the input. So if you're using an external source to filter the video through here and save it, that's what you'd be using. You'd go to video and you'd input it in there. Typically when you've got your cables, you'll see that there's two different ends. Usually instead of having the cable sticking straight up out of the unit, you'll probably want to have the side view one here. So you'll just insert this, plug it in. This one goes on the back of the cable. So on the back of your push cable, you've got your foot counter here where the cable feeds through, and then you've got a plug on this side. So this is what you're going to be plugging your cable into. It'll just run in here, and it shouldn't really impede the movement of your rod at all. So when you have your rod off, you can see that it still spins freely. There shouldn't be any issues when you've got the cable hooked up that way. Um, for the camera head, If you're not wanting to use the foot counter, you can just pull it out this way. If you want to, you would set it in through the locking set screws. And just lock it into position this way. And now every time you pull it out, the mechanism inside is going to spin. And this is going to be what's going to record how far in you've pushed. Camera head, you've got a connector here that's going to fit with these pins on here. You want to always make sure that your O-ring is sealed and on. This is what's going to keep it waterproof. We do include a couple extras in the bag, so you do have those if you need them. So screw this unit on, make sure it's tight so that the O-ring is engaged. And like I said, that's going to make your waterproof connection. Once that's hooked up, you can turn on your monitor. Um, audio visual, or the AV setting, is going to turn the unit on. That'll give you your live image, and you'll see that you're on AV1. Because this unit's pen and tilt, you can use the controls here to spin it around. And then also, you can spin side to side, or you can move the camera itself. So once it's in position this way, you can spin it in a circle as well. Uh, recording, you can do that using the buttons on the side or with the remote control as well. To record, you're not going to want to be in AV mode, you're going to want to be in DVR mode. So you'd switch that over. Okay, so now that you're in the DVR functions, you'll see that you have your video input and then you've got your save files, um, stuff like that. To get out of here and go back to your live image, you can just hit the OK button 
So you'll hit that. That'll take you back into the live image. You can see a little cursor here. It'll disappear within 10 seconds, but if you wanted to write text, you could do that there. So you can record what job you're on and the text will save onto your video files. So you can say, you know, job two, and then type in what you're looking at or what you're seeing. Um, so that, that function's also there. Um, that's what you would use the keyboard for, or when you're capturing files, you can also name them as well if you need to. So going back, when you hit the menu button, you can see that you'll come back into your DVR. Um, let's just do a quick video file, I guess. Um, so you'll hit record up here. You'll see that the record light comes on. You'll have um, a short video file that we're just going to do. And then you'll hit stop. You'll see the video stops recording. When you go into your menu, you can either find the file using the buttons on here, or if it's easier, you can use the remote control. Okay, so from the DVR functions, we can look at the video that we just recorded. If you want to just browse it, you can go browser, open it up. You want to see what's on the hard drive. That'll load. And then you'll find the video that you just did. If you don't name it or anything, it'll just come up with a date um, that it's recorded on. And then you can see it's already playing here. If you hit OK again, or enter, it'll play full screen. So you can watch the video. You can rewind, pause, go back. Um, if you wanted to, say, take this video and copy it over to your USB stick, you can do that as well. You just want to go back um, here. So you would exit out of this. Um, we can even just go back to menu. You can go to file copy. So this is where you copy the files between your hard drive and USB stick. So you click OK there. You can plug this in here if you want. And then you're going to want to copy from the H hard drive um, onto USB. So you click OK. It'll ask what files you want to copy. We'll do the one that we just did. Um, so you press the play button up here. That's going to select check mark and then copy it into the hard drive here. And proceed to copy files. Okay. And then it'll take some time to copy it over. So any files that you record, you can send over to a USB stick and then you can take that and either give the USB st stick to somebody or you can use that to transfer files onto a computer if it's easier. Um, without doing that, the other option too would be there's a, a second port for a PC so you can run a USB cable directly into a PC and just take the files off that way but you're taking the whole box with you to your computer or laptop and then plugging it in, transferring files off the hard drive that way. To get back out of here, you would just click the menu button. You're back at the live image now. So what you're going to do with your pan and tilt functions as well, as you're rotating your camera head around, if you tend to get out of position, you can always click in between the two and this will reset your um, tilt function on your camera. So instead of the panning circle function, it'll reset your camera so it's level again. So you know that it's right in the middle when you're doing your inspections that way. Um, this would be helpful if you have it on a skid or on a roller and you're in the middle of a pipe. After you've been looking around, if you want to just quickly reset to look straight back down and continue going, that's what you would use. And then once that's done, you can reposition it as you need to. Okay, so once you have your cable set up with your camera head, you can see that the probe right now we have through the, um, the bracing mechanism for the meter counter. Inside there's a little disc that will record how far you go. So if we take the brake off, once you pull it out, you can see the image on the screen. It's recording how much reel we've taken off of here, so 2.6 feet. If you find that you need to reset, you can do that with the button on here. This will zero it back again. So 
if you're having some issues or if you want to mark out from a certain place that you're seeing where you're going to, you would use that. Um, when you do that, as you insert it back into it, it shouldn't record either, so it's set to zero, and then once you start pulling it out again, it'll start counting again. So that'll give you an, an ability to do that if you need to. You can also switch from feet to meters if you need to. So that's the second button. You'll see that it'll go to meters instead of feet, and it's just a simple, uh, just a simple tap for you to switch that back and forth. Um, when you get your unit, it's going to come with a couple skids. Some of these units are just going to be uh, simple plastic ones. They would fit over the camera head, and you'd want to secure them back here on top of this section of the camera head. This is going to be where your camera still has the ability to move and rotate. So once you screw these parts in, it'll create a secure connection here where you're not going to damage anything, and this will still allow you to move your camera head as you need to. So you're not going to have any issues when you're going around this way or if you're spinning sideways to, to look up and down. Uh, the other skid that you get is just a basic, a basic one that's like this. This one's going to be a bit different where there's actually a threaded section. For this one, normally you would insert this here on the other side and then put this one on back here and just screw it in this way. This way it's locked into place back here so your camera head still has free movement and you're not going to have any issues that way. Um, again, the short part would be here so it's not going to move anywhere. So that way you're locked in. There is also a rolling skid that we sell. The rolling skid is going to be for larger pipes. You're looking at 8 inches to 20 inches and that one will again fit back here and just raise it up and center it. Okay, so with the Anaconda, for larger diameter pipes, you're going to want to use the rolling skid. This is going to be used for 8 inch to 20 inch lines. It's got wheels that will extend, so you can actually center the camera head in these larger lines. It will allow you to look around, see up and down a bit better, and then also the wheels will help you roll down. Um, for pipes that have buildup or sludge on the bottom, you're going to want to use this because it will allow you to get over that or over cracks and push through. Um, when you're using some of the other skids, like the plastic ones, these ones are going to have uh, different application setups, so you'd want to use these in duct work, stuff like that, where there's mostly just dust. You're not actually pushing through sludge or through stuff that's going to um, either gunk it up or get stuck on. Um, with the rolling skid, to put this on the camera, you're going to have to undo a couple things. So when you receive it like this, it'll be compacted. Initially, what you're going to want to do is uh, loosen the wing nuts that are on the back. So once those are done, you can remove the inner fitting. Uh, those are also some Allen keys that are going to be here. You'll get this in the bag, so you can use that to undo the screws here. Once you have these out or even just loosened, you can dismantle it this way. This part will unscrew from here. And there's also a plastic uh, coupling as well, so you'll want to unthread that. To insert this on the camera head, you're going to need to take it off. So to do that, we'll just turn this off and we'll unscrew this camera head too. First thing you want to do is you want to put this on the back of the cable. It's just going to sit down here. Next on the camera head. You're going to want to insert the plastic. It's going to clip on here and this will still allow the camera head to move around. So that's why you need that so you can still have the fitting there. But what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to still pan and tilt the camera head. You're not going to have any issues that way. So you want to line up the plastic in the metal. Get the threading down, attach it this way. You can see that your camera head still has mobility. For this skid, remember the wing nuts are going to be at the back. So you're going to insert it this way. And then you're going to want to attach your camera head.
tighten it down as far as you can because you want that O-ring to have the correct amount of pressure on it. And then you're going to want to connect this part as well. So once this is connected, your skid will be assembled. You'll just need to tighten up the components. So put those Allen keys back in. And then also do the wing nuts at the back. see even if we just do these ones you can see that you're now set up to have a unit set up on the wheels and inside a pipe to roll down and do your inspections this way while still having the camera head free to move around.